<laughs> Hi, Big Lot <laughs> Hi, Big Lot Bible. I'm Holly. I'm Chris. And we're Not Too Sure Adventures. We are full time travellers. Um, we started in April last year. Um, we currently travel with the two of us and two and dogs. Two dogs, Tora and Aria. Yep, they're pretty crazy. <laughs> One's a. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> One's a um, husky <laughs> cross kelpie, and the other's a blue healer. She's a puppy. She is probably our most handful. <laughs> Full time job, that one. <laughs> um, so, I guess we always dreamed about doing a big lap um, around Australia. It's kind of one of those things that we always said that we'd do well when we retired. Um, but when COVID hit, we couldn't go on holidays and we were saving money, so we just decided that we would... Instead of buying a house, we would do this? Yeah. So we just hit the road um, and have a look back. Don't think we'll stop anytime soon, so... Definitely not. <laughs> it's definitely a good time. Um, um, so we're currently in Perth, spending time with our family because we've been on the road for 10 months, so we came back to see them. Um, we are heading up north to Carnarvon where we've got a job yeah gonna work for a while to save up the bank account again and then hopefully head over to Queensland from there um which we're very excited about it's probably our favorite place yeah, but... definitely most excited about that <laughs> yeah um so <laughs> what is it set up uh, again <laughs> what is it set up uh so we have a 1995 ever new caravan caravan um which we are in right now. Which we've we renovated. Yeah, we bought it. Um, it was it was very in good in very good condition, um, but we ended up just renovating it so it looked more modern. Um, but we love it. We wouldn't change it for the world. Um, we're also in a '79 Cruiser um, with a dog box in the back, um, and we also have a rooftop tinny, rooftop tinny yeah. which we recently just bought um, because we started off with a boat. We loved having a boat, we loved fishing, um, but yeah, we decided to sell that for a caravan and now we've got a rooftop tinny. So I think we probably do both. Um, yeah, 50-50. Yeah, we find it quite hard to find some free camps or if you do find a free nice camp. Nice free camps anyway, not just the side of the road sort of thing. So. Yeah, um, so we tend to um, we tend to hit both and um, whatever has really good reviews, um, we tend to go to um, but we can't decide I think I'd say probably both it's quite hard to decide on which is best only because when you're free camping you love being isolated and, and yeah doing remote, your own sort of thing, thing doing your own thing but you then tend to start missing people that you talk to socializing and yeah whatnot. and meeting yeah. other travelers but then when you're in a caravan park you start to hate the whole being too around too people. many people <laughs> and being crammed in and small paying, places and paying for it obviously yeah so caravan parks are expensive so yeah, so um, I think it's 50-50. We like free camps, but when we're in free camps, we miss them. the other yeah. side of caravan park life. So Shark Bay, just good as when we were there, the weather was just perfect. It was just mm -hmm. no wind, just we flat as. It was awesome. We camped right on the beach. Yeah, a right nice free beach. camp spot. Yeah, and yeah, literally the water was dead flat. It was actually making us sick sometimes when we went out on the boat because yeah, it was so calm. we wouldn't move. <laughs> um, either that or Barnhill. Barnhill was probably the other second option that I'd say was our favourite. Yeah. Um, we met some really good friends there. Um, the, yeah, you're on the beach, but you're still above, so you can look over um, the beach. You get They do live music, um, pizza nights. Um, lawn bowls. Lawn bowls, yeah. It's so, very socialised sort of environment. Yeah. yeah, so that was really good too. Um, so we both agree on Island, Island Land. Land. Yeah, yeah, so that was pretty amazing. You have to get a permit to go out to Island Land, um, and then it's a thousand kilometres of dirt to get there. It's not a bad, it's not overly that bad, the dirt road in. Um, it's just long. Yeah, but once you get out there, it's it's amazing. Yeah, um, it's just uh, yeah. untouched, sort of paradise, fishing and um, exploring yeah. and whatnot. And you see so much wildlife everywhere we yeah. saw. 
stingray jump out and fly. Um, we saw lots of fish, kangaroos, sharks, dolphins, sharks yeah, everything. Apes of fish, crocodiles, yeah. lots yeah. of crocodiles. It's pretty cool. But it's not just the the like we have the beach side, which is quite like pristine and really pretty, very blue water. And then they also have like the inland, where it's like waterfalls and like lots of exploring. Yeah. Yeah. Gorges and whatnot. Yeah. yeah it's just awesome. Um, but yeah, that was pretty. Pretty amazing. Oh, and also you can go to uh, islands as well, yeah, which is pretty island amazing. Hopping, and you can also camp. camp out there. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Adelaide. <laughs> We're not much of city people, so yeah, definitely would avoid Adelaide city. I think that's more because we worked there for four months as well, so being in the city um, is quite a lot for us. So we just yeah. Yeah, probably would avoid the city and would love to go back to South Australia, just not the city. <laughs> yeah. um, go. Queensland. Queensland. <laughs> Cannot wait. 100%. Yeah. We want to do Cape York. Yeah, um, tip and everything. Can yeah. Fraser Island. Yeah, we have a lot of places. Just, yeah, the whole listed. of Queensland. Very yeah. excited for. Yeah, we can't wait. Two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> it is restricting, but... um. I guess if you commit to travelling with them, then you just you gotta be prepared to missing out of things or paying the extra price for dog sitters and whatnot. We do have a good setup in the back of the ute with the dog box. Um, it's nice and cool in there for them. Uh, there's plenty of room. We can water, toys, food, everything. So when we go out um, for walks and whatnot, and they can't come with us, they might just spend an hour or two in there. Yeah, look, but, uh, we, we started off with one dog and we already knew we were going to be restricted in, with national parks. Um, but, and then when we were on the road, we kind of gained another one. Yeah. Um, but I would say, like, if you were going to not travel with a dog, I wouldn't say get a dog on the road because then it does limit you. But if you do have a dog and you're willing to sacrifice or, yeah, like you said, make sacrifices with money with the fact that you have to pay to, for someone to look after your dog Dog sitters with national parks or not. National parks is the biggest one we've come through. Yeah. Most caravan parks these days are pretty good. Yeah. As long as your dogs are uh, well controlled, caravan parks don't really mind. Yeah, exactly. But national parks is the biggest one. Some yeah. national parks in Australia will let you take your dogs in, some won't, so that's what you just got to work with. Well, yeah, South Australia was the biggest one we've been to where they allow you to walk your dog on a lead. Um, but everywhere else has been so Pretty far strict. that you can't have a dog in at all. Yeah, probably the scariest time was when we were leaving Arnhem Land. So like we said, it's a thousand k's of dirt road and about halfway through we dropped the wheel bearing on, on our boat. boat trailer. Yeah. Luckily we were carrying spares, but for a moment there we felt very isolated and very alone. Yeah, and we just like someone drove past us, they didn't stop. Um, and we were, I don't know, we were just a bit, it was a bit stressful, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, knowing you had to change <laughs> a bearing in the yeah. scorching heat in the middle of the day. And then um, we're probably halfway between the petrol station in and the middle of the road and, <laughs> and the Back at Nullum, uh, Yeah, Nullum Nullum Bay. Bay. So, yeah. yeah, that was a scary moment. <laughs> So I'd probably say the 12 volt system yeah. on the solar panel. We've got a 12 volt system in the back of the ute which runs all our fridges and that. And a 12 volt system in the caravan as well. Uh, I'd highly recommend one with some good solar panels. Yeah. Fit as many as you can on your roof and carry a couple portable ones and yeah, you'll be alright then. Yeah, I think it was a big shock at first because we weren't really sure on how much, how much our stuff would draw from our battery. but. We've now got the hang of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you definitely need a lot more solar panels than, or a lot more voltage than, is that right? Yeah, solar panels. A lot more solar panels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to cover the fact that you have so much drawing yeah, from yeah, your so battery. Yeah, so many fridges and whatnot. Freezes. Especially because we go try to go off grid for a while, so. At first we weren't carrying a generator. Now we got the caravan, we carry a generator, but if you don't want to go through the hassle of having the generator, definitely spend the money on a decent 12 volt system yeah so both we first um, when we first left we saved up what we think was would be enough to yeah, yeah. last a year but we were having too much fun spending way too much money then we um, bought a caravan so yeah well we were just enjoying ourselves but yeah. i think we were stressing at the start 
try and make sure we stay on a budget, but then we were not really enjoying ourselves as much. Um, and we, we also realised we wanted to do this longer than a year, so we committed ourselves to start working about six months into it anyway. Yeah, so we decided to work and um, travel as much as possible. So now we just pick up work where we can um, for as long, as long as we can. And then- Or as long as we want. Yeah, or as long as we want. And then we'll hit the road again and keep going like that, hopefully. <laughs> so I don't know how much we spend. No, nah, in total I wouldn't have a clue, but we know how much fuel we spent in eight, nine months of traveling. We did, uh, how many Ks we did? About 25,000 Ks. And we spent $7,135 in fuel. So fuel's probably our biggest expense. Yeah. Um, so. Because our car chews through so much. Yeah. And we're towing. Um, so that's probably the biggest expense, which I probably would say it's probably the biggest expense for everyone. Yes. Yeah, kind of um, if not that, accommodation's quite expensive sometimes. Um, but yeah, fuel's probably our biggest expense, um, especially when you're traveling long distances and we tend to like to explore a lot more so we yeah. don't sit in one place for we do a lot of a lot of kilometers yeah in our own state in three months we did 10,000 k's so we, we didn't even explore most of it really yeah we yeah. um we tend to not sit still so if we're sat in a caravan park we'll try to find something that's close and we'll go explore that area and then the next day we'll do the same and keep finding different areas to explore until we finish exploring then we'll go to another spot yeah. so we tend to go through a lot of fuel um, which means we spend a lot of money on fuel but how easy it is yeah. how easy it is to, to achieve something like this yeah, if you want to travel do it just yeah. don't be scared to do it uh, you won't regret it yeah Definitely won't. at first it was very scary to us like we yeah. obviously thought oh my gosh how are we gonna travel and afford our lifestyle and see everything we want to see and yeah you, you quickly adapt to your new life i'd say the hardest thing is slowing down at first really yeah I'm getting trying. used to not relaxing have, yeah to <laughs> relax and enjoy a day and have a day off like and spend multiple days doing nothing sometimes because you're just enjoying yourself and enjoying your pure fact that you do have absolute 100 percent freedom yeah definitely um, so I reckon freedom. Yeah, definitely the freedom. Yeah, being able to go where you want, see what you want. Do what you want. Yeah. Under your own time. We never really planned anything either. We didn't like booking stuff in advance and yeah. have a plan. We just sort of just did what we wanted to do in that area, then moved on to the next. Never booked a caravan park, never booked anything. If they didn't have spots, then we'd just go and find somewhere else to camp or another caravan park. It's just easier that way, less stressful of having to, having to be somewhere at a certain time. So we just pretty much lived like that for six, seven months and it was awesome. Yeah, well, I kind of planned like little things like where I wanted to see, but it was never really like, we have to go to this place on this date and we must see this at like this time. It was more like, oh, I really want to see this. Do you want to see it? Let's go see it together, um, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, and work around like if we had to do anything with the dogs or not, whether it was in the national park. But just having that freedom to like go where we want, stay in a caravan park if we want, stay by the beach if we want, like just do what we want and not stress about it. It's yeah. quite nice. <laughs> caravan, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Buying this. Um. um. But yes, it's totally of, worth it. Almost left, left us broke, but luckily <laughs> we were working at the time, so we quickly saved up the money we spent. Yeah. But well worth it, yeah. especially when you're traveling like we are now, long term, and yeah. working and whatnot. It's just easier to have a proper base and somewhere to live. Yeah, well, as soon as we left, like it's lovely being out in the outdoors, but after a while, it does get a bit much being outdoors all the time. Um, obviously, being with Especially mozzies. Especially when it's getting cold. <laughs> mozzies, cold, or if, sometimes if it's really hot, um, sometimes it's just nice to have somewhere to hide in. Um, just like when you're on the road and you're just driving somewhere for a long distance, you like to stop for some lunch. It's nice to just be able to jump in the caravan and make that lunch or yeah. sit and relax um, before we get back on the road again. Uh, whereas before, 
we were making it out the side of the car and um yeah but that wasn't an issue either it more came down to when we started working and whatnot and in and out of cold and wet weather the caravan really came into its own element yeah definitely Nah, everything we take with us, we've used, and if we haven't used used it, we've thrown it out. Or sold. Like, or sold, because we don't like carrying unnecessary things. Probably the only thing I'd say, actually, is we bought two bikes in Darwin, just because we thought if we're working, we could ride them to work um, and then ride home, and it would make life easier. But it turned out when we got to um, Adelaide, we were in the hills yeah, and you could so not ride to work ride and I couldn't work, ride to work <laughs> it was just insane like we were so unfit as well <laughs> um so yeah I think that was probably the only thing that we probably spent it wasn't all that expensive and we, we only got, got rid of them as well because we didn't have the room when we left Adelaide we had nowhere to put them so we had to get rid of them our boat was our holder of all our stuff yeah. <laughs> so um yeah once we got the caravan we didn't have anywhere else to store them so um, that was probably the only thing that I'd say that we've bought and didn't use, but everything else we've actually used. Yeah. Um, I think we were pretty uh, pretty smart with that sort of stuff. We yeah. kind of I definitely recommend not overpacking yeah. or taking too many unnecessary things because they just end up getting in the way. And yeah, well, we were like worried about weight restriction. We didn't want to be overweight, and so I think that kind of helped us like narrow it down what we wanted and what we should keep and what we should not keep yeah. and yeah well, uh, the whole time we were traveling we weren't really affected that much we got stuck in well we weren't stuck we could still travel and whatnot we just couldn't go to darwin or catherine but we could still explore so it wasn't too bad yeah so we were stuck in pine creek right in the middle so yeah. luckily we got to do kakadu, kakadu national park so um, that wasn't a huge issue and the bottom end of litchfield um there was also a lot of gorges around yeah. um pine creek and it was only for four days so it wasn't a huge issue yeah so and the next real big issue was trying to get back into wa yeah adelaide was, was fine um they adelaide obviously was right, didn't open borders but was completely fine um no lockdowns there There's and a few restrictions here and there but yeah major the only other thing is getting back into wa to see our family um we had to apply for all the all the passes relevant passes and, and had to prove a lot and yeah very difficult yeah but i mean at least we're done we're here yeah, <laughs> we made it, it. <laughs> um, uh, our biggest tip would be pick up work wherever yeah. you get offered or wherever you see signs um for people needing work um we got offered a lot of work in a lot of places the whole time we were traveling yeah. especially right at the beginning and we were just being lazy because we just, just started our holidays so yeah. we were more excited about traveling and doing our own thing that we didn't actually take up on the work so we ended up running not running out of money but we ended up um chewing through our chewing money, through our money. Than we thought. yeah whereas if we took the option it would have covered our stay or at least bumped up our money a little bit more instead of it running low um but yeah that's probably our biggest tip also i'd just say have fun like don't stress too much about money you can always pick up work or you can always do something to make sure that it covers something like your accommodation. Um, so just stop stressing. It's just It's easy to do. You, everyone can do it and just have fun. Yeah. We've had so much fun and I don't think we'd ever turn back now. No, it wouldn't change uh, anything. It wouldn't, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> so this is our car and our rooftop tinny. Here is the dog box that they sleep in and get moved around in. <laughs> this is our shower. We also have a shower tent by Kick House. And we also have our fridge in here and our 12 volt system. Please ignore the mess. And then this is our caravan. We are currently updating a few things on our caravan with new suspension and new wheels. But that's what it looks inside. <laughs> <laughs>